Hello. In this video, we are going to analyze a psychrometric device. Uh, this is cooling with dehumidification. As you can see, uh, moist air, as you can see, moist air is entering at 40 degrees Celsius, 40% RH, and then it's cool. Heat is being removed with a cooling coil. Q dot out is one of our desired variable. We want to figure out how much is the uh, refrigeration capacity, which means what is Q dot out. Also, we would like to know how much water uh, is condensed, uh, taken out of this air. So from the get-go, we know and uh, is given that the exit temperature is 10 degrees Celsius. And then we'll do a what-if study of what if the relative humidity at the inlet were, were higher. So notice that uh, for state two, M dot A will remain constant. In other words, M dot A at state one and M dot A at state two cannot be different because dry air is not taken out or no new dry air is getting into the system. All right, so let's go and analyze the system using a suitable test step. Uh, obviously, it's an open steady problem. We'll follow the open system uh, steady branch and go to the specific branch and launch the psychrometry HVSE, HVSE test step. For state one, moisture is already the default fluid. So let's enter the variables that are known. The mass flow rate of dry air is given to us. M dot A is two kg per uh, second, I believe. So it is two kg per minute here. So let's go to two kg per second at 40 degrees Celsius, this is the dry bulb temperature, and relative humidity is given, well, instead of entering it here, we could declare that in the IO panel, so let's just calculate the state. In the IO panel, let's go and declare a relative humidity at the inlet, RH inlet, because that's, this will be a parameter of the problem, 0 0.4, that's the SI units, not the percent. So notice that I'm not calling it RH1 because that's a state variable. So RH inlet, you can come back and it's for state one, type in RH at inlet. So that should calculate the state of the inlet. Let's go and evaluate the exit state. State two is again moist air. There are two exit states. So let's evaluate the moist air exit state. The temperature has been cooled down to 10 degrees Celsius and as you already mentioned the mass flow rate of dry air cannot change. However, we cannot write, oh that's not correct, m dot a1. So, however, we cannot write mass flow rate of uh, uh, vapor is the same because we are taking water out so this will not be the same. So, what is the closing variable, what closes this state? What? The answer is that if we are condensing water, water vapor, that means the relative humidity at the exit must be 100%. Uh, the air must be saturated before you can condense any air. So that closes, uh, this is the closure for this state. So now the state is fully known. For state three, state three will be our uh, Condense con uh, liquid condensate state, so H2O, which is a PC model, we select, and you can see that the, the state has been modified, the state variables have been modified because we, have we are now using a PC model to figure out the state of H2O that's living. We know the temperature of the exit state is same as T2, in other words, air and condensed water, condensed water live at the same temperature, and we'll call it saturated liquid because the property uh, of m liquid water will be very, you know, it's not a function of pressure at all at such uh, low level pressure. So anyways, so this is a standard practice. Even if I put 100 kPa here, you, the, you can see that 42 is my enthalpy. This is the enthalpy will be needed. So if, if the water was coming, which is, comes out at 100 kPa, you can see that the barely enthalpy is changed. So it's a good practice to just, because for, when you solve the problem manually, that's what we do, we assume it's saturated liquid because the enthalpy 
is a very weak function of pressure at such low pressures. All right, so now that we have calculated the states, we go to the device panel and state one is my inlet and there are two exit states. State two is the moist air exit state and state three is H2O air exit state. And we know there is no work transfer, so we can calculate uh, the heat transfer, minus 117 kilowatt. We can convert that to ton if we want. So 33.3 ton is the refrigeration capacity needed for this particular cooling. And of course, uh, you can go back and take a look at the state 3. As you can see, the amount of water condensate is found here in kg per second. You can convert it to kg per minute if necessary. Uh, also, if we go to the div, uh, graphics panel, you can see uh, state 1 is here and state only the moist air states are shown. As you can see, omega has decreased and that's why water has been removed. Water has to be removed for omega to decrease in a, in a problem like this. Finally, let's go, let's remember the tonnage of the system and let's go and increase the relative humidity from 40% to let's say 90%. Uh, 0.9, we registered the change and do a super calculate. All the states are updated because the device panel. Notice that from 33 ton, the, the, the refrigeration capacity has more than doubled. So that, sh that, that means that we need, a, we need to remove a whole lot more heat uh, because of high humidity at the inlet. That's why air conditioning becomes very expensive in humid weather compared to drier weather. You can do further parametric study to, uh, to explore that reducing the temperature doesn't cost much, much money, much refrigeration capacity compared to reducing the relative humidity.